Our gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of Matthew, verses 11 through 16 and 25 to 30. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came with neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet, wisdom is indicated by the deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except by the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. There's a lot of stuff in that one passage, and probably way too much for one sermon. And mostly I'm going to be focusing on the end of that. But I do want to talk a little bit about what came first. You might wonder what was going on when we're talking about uh, someone neither eating or drinking, and they say John has a demon, and the Son of Man, in other words, Jesus came eating and drinking, and they say, oh look, he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors. What's happening here is that Jesus has been traveling all around and having all these wonderful meetings and doing miracles and having all these people that were just thirsting to be taught. And when he got to this particular place, in the, in the, we're getting sort of towards the end of the stories here, he's suddenly being criticized more openly and suddenly being attacked more openly by those who felt threatened, like <coughs> Pharisees, who say, no, 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 everybody has to follow all of these rules, this one and this one and this one and this one and this one too and this one and this one, and my goodness, we're probably having to carry around the rule book about that big uh, to, keep, to keep it all straight. And so they are trying to discredit him. They're saying, look, he's a glutton. He's just eating. And look at his friends. How come he's hanging out with all of these terrible people? Well, who's going to help the terrible people get better if not Jesus? So then he prays, and he says, thank you, Father, because you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent. I imagine that while he was praying, he said, from the wise and intelligent, meaning those Sadducees and Pharisees who were holding themselves up to be such authorities over everything. They didn't see him for what he was, or if they did, they were too frightened and they blinded themselves. Thank you for revealing them to infants, to children. How wonderful it is to have a bunch of kids here today to hear about sharing burdens and not trying to do everything all by themselves. He says, everything's been given to me by my father. How many of us as parents would give everything to our children? We would do anything and everything to make sure that they are safe. At least most of us would. Some don't. 
but most of us would. Then finally, he wraps it up. Come to me, all that are weary and heavy laden, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Have any of you seen a yoke for oxen? You've maybe at least seen the picture. Big, heavy beam of wood. I've read things described about how they're made. Not very flexible at all. Big, heavy beam of wood with a couple of loops under it that the oxen's head goes into. In fact, let me take a second and see if I can do this. Yes. Okay, can you see that kind of faint, it's, it's faded out. That is an oxen yoke. It's a yoke that you put on the oxen so that they can haul or pull whatever it is you want them to haul or pull. All right. I think that would be terribly uncomfortable. Just terribly uncomfortable. And it's heavy all by itself, let alone having a big old wagon behind it. Or sometimes people would use them to pull plows so that they could make furrows and plant seeds in the ground. And they would be behind it on a handheld plowshare, a big blade that goes into the dirt and so the ox would be pulling against something that had a lot of resistance to going. So that's, that's a yoke. The yoke that he was talking about at the time, take my yoke, indicates that they have some other yoke on at the moment. Don't wear that one, wear mine. Because his burden is light. So what's he talking about here? We're talking about all that pile of books of rules and regulations, all those things that lack the true spirit of God, that don't even acknowledge those big two commandments about loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself, but instead worry about shellfish and other things. But, but in other words, trying to be righteous and holy and saved by your own efforts, that's an impossible burden. We are saved by grace and faith. We are not saved by works. I could work and work and work and work. I could finish painting upstairs all by myself and that would not get me to heaven any faster than us working as a group and sharing that burden and doing that in the spirit of God and building our people here. If we pray and give our burdens to God, they will be light for us at that time. Many people have terrible, terrible burdens. One of the other choices for the lectionary today was the story of Rebecca and Isaac when um, Rebecca was summoned, shall we say, to marry Isaac. Isaac, the hope of the nation, right? Isaac, Abraham's son, who uh, on another week, the, letter, the lectionary that I didn't preach on extensively was when Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac and then was delivered from that chore, right? Um, that Isaac, that very important Isaac, the one who brought us the whole nation and Israel and all of that, was to marry. Abraham was very, very rich. And so he sent for a girl from the right family. Had to be from the right family. He sent for Rebecca. And 
the way the story goes, it kind of leaves out whether she had any choice about whether she would marry him or not. The men of the families had decided she was going to marry him. Her choice was whether she was going to go right this second or in a few hours. Anyway, it says she went right away. Uh, that's the short version of the story. But the point from it for me today is sort of an odd one. There are many people, and many of them are women, all over the world who lack freedom. And there are many who have freedom, or who think they do. But at least, with, uh, with listening to the Spirit of God, and with doing everything we can do to help each other carry those burdens, to lift some of that fear and that burden, and to provide safe places and sanctuaries and help when it's needed, we can help people regain their freedom. Whether there are people in Nigeria, India, El Salvador, or here. When we have that freedom that God gives us, when we give our burdens to God, we have a job to do. And that is to share that very same hope with the others. Now Jesus tells his disciples, and he talks to them like they're kids. And he says, you guys can't seem to make up your minds about anything, about what you want, what you need, even how you feel. Are you going to mourn? Are you going to dance? What are you going to do? They wouldn't dance when there was a food. They wouldn't mourn when somebody was crying. What was going on? Sharing is a two-way street. Giving up burdens is a two-way street. It means, like with the children, you each get help and you each give help. You each receive love, and you each give love. You each receive hope, and you each give hope. In the passage, Jesus is sort of using the yoke as a metaphor for discipleship, for taking on the job that Jesus has for us to do. But the good news is, it's not slavery. The good news is, it doesn't put us in chains. The good news is, it doesn't feel like that giant piece of oak or whatever they made that out of on our neck. The good news is, it is possibility and hope and faith. And yes, it is somewhat of a burden. It is something we need to do. Burden doesn't mean it's bad. That's one of those things. It's one of those words we look at and oh, that's a burden. But we have to describe it. A heavy burden. Oh, that can hurt. But Jesus says, my burden is light. There's some famous music, of course, which I'll usually bring in about things by a composer named Handel. And it's something that a lot of us hear every year called Messiah. And most of you know it from the Hallelujah Chorus. It was, Hallelujah. There's a song in there that a lot of choruses, when they do the Messiah at Christmas, sometimes at Easter, they're afraid of singing it. The name of the song is my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. But, okay, I haven't practiced it for like five years. It goes something like, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And it goes, all over the place. It's insane. <laughs> now, when I teach it to the choirs, I have to tell them to go, It's a hard song, kind of an ironic and true 
correct sense of the word, I think, an ironic use of music and text. Yoke is easy and burden is light, and oh my goodness, it's hard to say. Of course, it's supposed to sound like it was just floating along in the air. <coughs> what are the keys to doing that? He says, come unto me. So you have to come. To whom was that offer made? All of us. You have to come. Come unto me. All ye that labor, come now. Right? What else? Learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Learn. Read the Bible. Have conversations. Pray with each other. Read other books about it. Read about prayer. Read about God. Come to Bible study. Come to church. Learn from each other. Learn from me. Learn from Georgette. I learn from Georgette every single Thursday at Bible study. She says something cool every week. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. You know? Come and learn my nature, he says. Come and learn my nature so that you can not only be blessed, you can become a blessing. And that is our task from this particular passage. Don't just ignore the food that's playing. Dance. Don't ignore the person that's mourning. Weep with them. Help them carry that burden. Don't just say, oh, I hope everything's going to be okay. Do something to help. That's what we're learning. This verse is not, oh, give it all to God and everything will be fine. I'll just sit around and wait. That's not it at all. This verse is share the burden, share the hope. And you see in the title, I put something up there about share our freedom. Our freedom in Christ, our freedom in God, and I hope our freedom here. I'm not going to step into the controversies about immigration. I'm just going to say that people are hurting and in need and we have to find a solution. I don't know what the right solution is. I really don't. And I pray for our leaders and I pray for the people most impacted by all of that controversy that there is a way that with love and with caring we can safely keep our freedoms safe and help the people that need help. Because we are truly free if we aren't able to share that freedom. There's a quote in your bulletins from Nelson Mandela. It says, I am not truly free. I'm going to have to look at my bigger print for you. It's okay, I have one. <laughs> I am not truly free if I am taking away someone else's freedom. Just as surely as I am not free when my freedom is taken from me. The oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. Simply food for thought. I pray that we are all able to come to Jesus and the Spirit and to learn of Him and to share our burdens and to take on Jesus' yoke, which is light and easy, and that we can help other people do the same.